Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining our webinar on Get Schools Cooking, a system approach to change. We're very excited that the applications to join this program are now open, and we look forward to speaking with you all for the next 45 to 60 minutes about the program. I'm Heidi Kessler. I'm the Chief Programs Officer for the Chef Ann Foundation, and I am very grateful to have two wonderful guests joining us today. First, we have Chef Beth Collins, who is our Chef Consultant for the Get Schools Cooking Program and provides a lot of our on-site expertise and technical assistance. We also have Emma Kitzman, who's the Nutrition Services Supervisor from Tempe Elementary School District in Arizona, who will be speaking with us about her experience in going through the program. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to go ahead and type them in the question and answers box right at the bottom of your screen, and we'll answer as many questions as we can at the end of the webinar. I also want to make sure to give a shout out to our sponsor, the Lifetime Foundation, who makes sure that all of our webinars and the resources available on the lunchbox are for free for all schools across the country. So in our time together today, we're going to talk a little bit about the Chef Ann Foundation, just to make sure you're all familiar with the foundation and the work that we do. We'll spend most of our time talking about the Get Schools Cooking program, which is hopefully why you're joining us today. You'll get some tips for applying to the program and understand how the application process works, as well as um, you'll hear a little bit about the assessment that happens on site once you join this program. The most exciting part is going to be able to hear from Emma from Tempe Elementary School District who will share her experience and then we'll get to as many questions as we can. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available online to participants after, after today's show. Well, webinar. <laughs> All right, so the Chef Ann Foundation was founded in, 2000, in 2009 by school food reform pioneer Chef Ann Cooper, who had a vision to make sure that every child across the nation in school had access to fresh, nutritious food every single day. She's been on this mission um, since 2009, and our reach has so far been almost 3 million children in over 9,000 schools in all 50 states. These are some of our programs. Um, Salad Bars to Schools is something that we're very proud of in partnership with um, United Fresh, as well as Whole Kids Foundation. We have distributed over 5,000 salad bars to schools across the country. We also have a grant program called Project Produce, which has provided over $400,000 directly to schools to purchase fresh fruits and vegetables to combine with nutrition education in the cafeteria. Get Schools Cooking is what you're here to learn more about today. The lunchbox I hope everyone is familiar with. It has a tremendous amount of resources, all online and easy to access at any time to help transition your operation from heat and serve to scratch cooked. One of my favorite things about the lunchbox is all the resources and materials are downloadable and usable. So we provide spreadsheets for how to determine your meals per labor hour and position control, everything that you can modify and use in your own district. The School Food Institute is um, a new school that has launched in the past few months that is online professional development for food, for school food service professionals. Again, all focused on the operational needs of transitioning from heat and serve to cook from scratch. Make sure you stay in the loop with the Chef Ann Foundation by following us on Facebook. Uh, it's the Chef Ann Foundation. You'll see um, great success stories from schools and the work that is happening, as well as opportunities and resources available from the Chef Ann Foundation. When you go to the website, you'll also be able to sign up for our newsletter on the lunchbox to be able to stay, to, to stay in touch with the newest trends and the newest resources that we're providing. All right, so let's dive into our most important topic of the day, Get Schools Cooking, a systems approach to change. We are very excited to be launching this in partnership with the Whole Kids Foundation, a fantastic partner and innovator in school food. 
So the mission of the Get Schools Cooking program is to provide districts with the individualized support that they need in order to move the food service program from highly processed heat and serve to a cook from scratch program, including whole fresh ingredient based meals. Little more details about the program are that it's three years. When you sign up to join this program, we are um, going to be committed to working together for three years and in many cases longer as the transition from heat and serve to scratch certainly doesn't happen overnight. In the transition, we work specifically with you on five key areas, food, finance, facilities, human resources, and marketing. Each of these areas, needs to be addressed, controlled, and potentially improved in order to best support scratch cooking. Up to five districts will be selected uh, to join this program during this cycle. The application is currently open and folks have until the end of day on March 1st, 2018 to submit their application. We wanted to give you a snapshot of the other districts who have participated in this program and where they're from. So as you can see, we're from coast to coast and corner to corner. Um, the ones in purple began working with us in 2016 and the ones in yellow began working with us in 2017. We look forward to adding more states to the map. So let's talk about the process that school districts go to when they, when they join the Get Schools Cooking program. So the application process, it's a big and it's a, it's a significant application. And the reason being is that we are going to be making significant change in your district. You're gonna hear more about the application process in a few minutes. Once we have all the applications, we'll go through and review everything carefully and we'll select a handful of districts to go through an interview. The interview is designed to make sure that we are in line with the goals and mission and objective of the program and to make sure that the district has full leadership support and to understand where you are in your process of change. The selected districts will then, um, will then be presented with a contract or an agreement between the district and the Chef Ann Foundation um, to outline the roles and responsibilities as we move forward together. Then we have a really exciting on-site workshop. At this workshop, districts attend for two days and it's in Boulder, Colorado, home of one of the best examples of school food service innovation in the country. Workshops and sessions that we'll cover um, review the foundational strategies for successful school food reform. We'll also get to go on site to Boulder Valley School District kitchens and cafeterias to see the transformation that they've made to scratch cooking over the past eight years. Then our team will come on site to your district to spend a significant time, in some cases up to two weeks, on site. School food experts Chef Ann Cooper and Chef Beth Collins, who you'll hear from shortly, observe every aspect of your current operation in action, and they'll identify opportunities for improvement in day-to-day -day activities. After the visit, the analysis will result in a report of recommendations that is used to guide the next steps and working um, the next steps in, wor in working with leadership and community. You'll hear more about the assessment in a few minutes. After that, there's an on-site in your district strategic planning session, and this is really where it all comes together. School food experts will lead um, your district leadership and food service team members through a strategy session to review the actions needed in order to achieve the desired results based on the, re based on the outcomes of the on-site assessment. Next, there is a district-owned action planning process. The Chef Ann Foundation team will work with you and your district to develop a focused action plan that guides district operations and evaluative goals for the following two years. Then, all participating districts have the opportunity to apply for a $50,000 systems improvement grant. This $50,000 can be spent on um, infrastructure upgrades, uh, equipment needs, software, things that were identified in your assessment as lacking and things that will help move you forward towards scratch cooking. 
Then um, one year after your assessment, you participate in an online evaluation where you answer quantitative and qualitative questions in regards to your changes. And we do that again a second year, um, two years after the assessment, as we know that creating this change takes a lot of time, um, a lot of time and effort. So we continue the we, so we continue to have an extended evaluation. We have seen fantastic successes in the districts that we have been working with. So far, several districts have implemented new technology in order to increase efficiencies in their operations, in order to better order their food, order your food, in order to better track inventory, and in order to better do your meal menu planning and to capture the data and results around, around the changes that you're making. All of our districts have introduced new scratch cooked recipes to their students. Most of the recipes have come from the Lunchbox, which has over 300 recipes scalable and designed for school food. Um, almost all of our districts have improved efficiency through the installation of new equipment, such as salad bars, um, ovens, steamers, other pieces, other pieces of equipment. Many of our districts have also developed relationships with new vendors in order to procure more local products. We've seen our districts update and develop new staffing models that increase efficiency and allow for the transition to scratch cooking. We have seen out with the bad, we've seen many districts eliminate highly processed chicken nuggets, chicken patties, chicken starfish. Um, we're seeing those start to disappear and we're seeing it replaced with raw proteins. Um, in some cases, raw proteins, in other cases, um, pre-cooked but whole muscle as there's certainly a transitional period from heat and serve to fully cook from scratch. The districts that we work with have done a phenomenal job at gaining significant community support for their departments, um, both within the school community and the broader, and, and the broader community. In order to participate in the Get Schools Cooking program, um, we're looking for districts where all of the schools participate in the National School Lunch Program. Uh, so if your high schools have opted out or anybody else has opted out in the past couple of years, um, then um, that would not make you eligible to participate in the program. Um, through the application and the interview process, you'll have to be able to demonstrate that you have full support from district leadership, because as you know, making changes to your department will impact the entire school. We're looking for districts that have a minimum enrollment of, of 3,000 students and that they serve meals at between four and 30 sites. So that is really, these are really the ideal size districts for us to be working with. Any district that participates in this program, I'm sure, will already have a deep and firm commitment to working towards scratch cooking. Um, that drive and that vision really has to come internal from the leaders of the food service program as well as the district in order for us to see the most success. And finally, the district must run a self-operated food service program. Um, so we're looking to work with self-ops as opposed to food service management companies. So I'm gonna now turn it over to Chef Beth Collins, who is going to talk more deeply about the application process and how to prepare, your, how to prepare yourself for success, as well as go over the details of what this on-site assessment is going to look like for you um, and the benefits that it can bring. All right, Beth, I'm going to pass the controls on over to you. Okay, I'm in control, I think. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for joining us. Let's see if I can get the slide to go here. It's not working for me, gals. There we go. So the application, um, like Heidi said, it is it's, it's a little long, but uh, we've actually made it a little easier this year, I think, because um, we've created more text areas in the application for you to explain rather than um, trying to, to get more data uploaded. So I think that'll be a little bit easier um, for filling out the application. Uh, we're looking for a, a really broad sweep of data and information about the department team, you know, why you want to do this grant, uh, current operations, menu planning, financial information, and 
There we go. Um, I think we've just got a lag on speed here, internet speed. So uh, I want to give a little bit more detail. This is a uh, actually a shortened list of the application checklist, but um, you should be uh, able to provide everything that we're looking for, which would be um, information about the team. Uh, the application is uh, set up in a program, and if you've applied for grants before, you'll probably find it fairly familiar where you, know, you have to fill in a lot of different fields. Uh, where we've um, expanded some of this to make it easier is, you know, for example, we really want to know who's in, in your leadership team, and we've made that a text box so you can just list who they are, what their role is. Just read the directions for each question, and if you follow the directions, you'll be providing the information we need. Um, we're going to ask for meal count and eligibility data and uh, for 16, 17 enrollment and eligibility by site, service days by site by meal type, and, um, and then your, your meal counts, your annual meal counts by site by meal type. And if you have, um, if you're running a preschool program that is not under NSLP, we're gonna ask for data about that. Um, Things like, you know, you'll upload your school calendar. One of the really Im important uh, questions, and they're all important, but is the why question. Why do you want to do this grant? Uh, for us who are reading the application, this is really the, the, the window we have into your operation right now. You know, we haven't met you yet. We haven't interviewed you yet, but we really want to understand why you want to do the grant. And I think after you listen to Emma, you'll, you'll hear somebody firsthand in terms of their experience of it. It's a pretty intense process. And, you know, it's like not everybody really wants to have somebody entering their district and looking around, but some people really do want that. So, um, but it, explain to us why, why you think this is for you. Um, we're gonna ask you to describe your operational model you know, are you site-based production? Do you have central production? Do you have warehouse? Uh, we describe in the question, you know, enough detail so that we, we really want to understand what you're doing day to day in your operation. We're going to ask some questions about your facilities. And then we've got a staffing question that you'll need to provide an upload, uh, you know, a, a spreadsheet probably would be the best of your um, staffing model uh, and it, it gives all the detail uh, that we're asking for by site and then also any of uh, any other support positions that food service is paying for like let's say you have drivers or or clerks or uh, warehousemen things like that um, and then there'll be other questions like what are your uh, what types of improvements and changes have you made in your program? What kind of challenges uh, do you feel are your, your biggest challenges day to day? Um, and then we'll ask you to describe your menu planning process. And, you know, we give you quite a bit of space for each of these text answers. So, you, you know, go ahead and go for it until the box tells you you can't go any further. So, like I said, the more, more is more is good. So, um, and then we'll ask for you to upload some menu information. Um, we're gonna ask questions about your a la carte programs if you have them. Uh, we'll ask for a copy of your administrative review. We're gonna ask some questions about procurement, your procurement process. You can describe uh, what your processes are. Give us an idea of your vendors. You know how many vendors you're working with. What what are you buying from different vendors? And then uh, we're gonna we're really only asking for one uh, physical document for a numbers type document because we we have it, it is challenging when you're doing a, a national program like this to get the same the actual data that you really want because in, until you go through the assessment process when we're they're bugging you for the exact document we're looking for. 
it's it's a little difficult when we just put it out there in an application. But what we're going to ask for is a multi-year budget budget to actual revenue and expenses. It's summarized by object code, so we don't need you know a monthly detail. We want a summary for uh, from fourteen fifteen through sixteen seventeen. If if you don't have access or know how to to pull that information, the business manager in your district will definitely be able to help you. That's that's something they know how to do. So, um, and we're going to ask some questions about your software, and that's really the um, that covers most of the questions in the application. So, uh, but. Hi Beth, it seems like maybe we lost you for a moment. Are you back? Are you back? Yes, you're back. back. Go right, right so, I don't know, I think I hit something that made it go mute. <laughs> right. Um, one of the things that's really important uh, is that you really have uh, support from your district leadership. Um, we Very often we'll, we, we run into food service teams, they really want to make change and they're, they're very isolated from their district leadership. And this isn't as simple as just having your superintendent sign off on the grant because the assessment process is very in depth. Um, and the assessment process does actually engage leadership. Um, it's one of the benefits of it, quite frankly, but um, to truly get the most out of out of this process, you have to have that support. It's one of the key features of uh, school food reform is to have the support of your district leadership. So that's a really important part. When we do the interview process, uh, it's actually the director and their direct report, whoever that is. In some cases, it's the superintendent. In some cases, it's the CFO or the business manager, or it might be director of operations. It really varies district by district. So, um, you know, be aware, you know, we'll be talking to, not to just you when we interview you. Um, I'm really not having much luck here on the, thank you. Um, the, I just wanted to, uh, let me look at my time here. Okay, I'm good. Um, we'll give you a little bit of an insight on the assessment process. Um, Emma will give you her view of it because she's been through it. Um, the assessment is, and we come to your district, it's me, it's usually always me and uh, my financial analyst, uh, Lorraine Farrell, who's a, she's a semi-retired, she's actually retired from school district work, but she has 35 years as a, uh, as a business manager in school districts. So she's extremely familiar with anything on the, um, the district side. So she and I come to your district and very often Anne is there, depends on the size of the district, but she's generally there also for a couple of days. And we look at um, various areas, you know, as uh, Heidi said, we're looking at food, finance, facilities, human resources, and uh, community communications and marketing. And that, that is those those are the big broad buckets. And uh, when we, before we come to the district, we, we provide you with a data request and it's a lot of documents. Mostly what we're looking for is raw data. We're not asking you to create stuff that you don't have. Um, and, but it's, a, it's, it's quite a bit of data for districts to pull together, but it's important for us to have it ahead of time or as much of it ahead of time so that we spend the limited time we have on site uh, to, the, to the best that we can. Uh, the physical review looks pretty much at anything that has to do with money and processes uh, that are happening in most food service departments and as they interface with the district accounting system. So every district's slightly different in how uh, their processes happen, but uh, 
that's the I'm not going to read through all the bullet points, but this is pretty much it's a it's a deep dive. Let's just put it that way. Um, operationally, again, we are looking at really at everything by you know we're looking at your district as a system in terms of the food service department it is uh it's very often this big messy you know we call it messy because it is dealing with food and people and kids and most district administrators really don't understand food service or want to very deeply but we love it we love the deep dive so we dive into everything and um, we're looking at, you know, we're looking at your job descriptions. We're, we're, we're going to ask you a ton of questions. There's a lot of, a lot of talking and interviewing. Um, we interview any of the key people in your department. If you've got 10 people in your district office, we're going to interview all 10 of them, maybe more than once. Um, so uh, we, we look at everything. We are, um, spending time seeing what you do while you're doing it so we're looking at data but we're also observing the actual environment that's kind of part of what what it is is seeing you guys in action you know yes it does change your having us on site is disruptive there's no question about that especially for the office emma can attest to that um uh, but we do get a sense of of who you are through that process and um, the school site visits a lot of people ask well what happens there you know we're really looking for i'm um, looking at the same data sets across the district we want to look at are all the sites doing the same thing that's one of the key things you know you can tell how how they're how the program's running by how much the same they do things if they're doing it at the same time this would be if they're running a uh, let's say they're running the same menu cycle um, are they does the food look and taste the same you know are the kitchens organized what are their work habits and this is really all through observation um, the, the, the school sites I, I think sometimes they think I'm an auditor and I'm not an auditor and I always you know we try to emphasize that it's not an audit it's not an inspection there's no right or wrong we're really looking to just see them in action so generally we'll visit a school site more than once try to see them at different times a day um, i can't always talk to people i don't try to interview um, and we don't really do sit down interviews at the school sites and really asking questions kind of while i'm walking around i take pictures of the equipment and the kitchen spaces so i can remember each kitchen um, take notes and things like that but we're really looking at um, what's the what do they look like you know while they're working how does it all how does the whole district kind of um, come together through all these different lenses that we're looking through um, can you yes thank you and uh, we're also looking at how you're connected uh, as far as stakeholder engagement you know is food service is kind of the invisible um, we're just providing meals uh, to the district you know not really doesn't really have a public image um, is there educational engagement is there anything happening either from the educational side or from the food service side that's really connecting to uh, food literacy and uh, you know what what's the school level support as far as principles and things like that and um, partnerships and PTOs really trying to get that sense is food service a big deal or are they just doing their job which is fine there's no right or wrong there but we're looking for where the opportunities are so we're always looking for the opportunities and the challenges where are you now where could you be what kind of things do you need to improve and that's generally the assessment and that's my time's up I believe Oh, it's kind of real quickly. <laughs> Sorry. No um, uh, this is basically the the steps. Um, you know, there's two visits. We do the on site. We prepare the report, and then we come back. We do a debrief session presentation, and then we do the strategic plan, like uh, Heidi was saying, and that's it.
Excellent, Beth. Thank you very much. Uh, this will likely be one of the more intensive applications that you have filled out for a grant for your school. Um, but I hope you now have an understanding of what it is and the reason that we go so deeply in order to make sure um, in the application process, in order to make sure that everyone will be able to move forward to success. All right, at this time, I'm going to um, try to return, uh, turn the um, clicking of the slides over to Emma Kitzman, who has been a fantastic partner of the Chef Ann Foundation and absolutely one of our superstar districts going through this program. Um, for the districts on the line, this is um, the most valuable opportunity to hear from a district that has gone through the process that you're considering. I want to remind folks to type in your questions in the question and answer box at any time and we'll work to answer them at the end of the session. All right, take it away, Emma. Are you able to um, uh, move your slides? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I fell off for a little bit there. So, okay, I think we're good to go. All right, my name is Emma Kitzman, and um, I guess I, you know, I'm glad to be introduced as maybe more of the exciting part of the um, slideshow, but hopefully if anything, like I can reassure you, I can encourage you to do it. Um, you know, I can always be a resource also after this um, because it sure has been an adventure from, I guess, our initial intention to where we're at now. So again, we are located in Tempe, Arizona. So if you've ever been to Arizona, we're right, um, you know, we're like 10 minutes from the airport. So we're definitely a suburb of the Phoenix area. Um, we have just under 12,000 students. Um, our average daily participation this year is at about 71%. It has dropped a little bit since when we first applied only by like 4%, but still 4% is 4%. Um, we have Arizona State University in our um, city and so it's been an interesting shift of um, a lot of families to have been had to be relocated as they the university expands um, so we've definitely had some impact in our schools where um, some apartment complexes and small housing has really moved some of our community and been replaced with single individuals attending college or just out of college um, you know into the workforce we are 74 percent free and reduced um, we have a very diverse population we again have that university we have a lot of professors um, higher income pockets and then we also do the opposite end where we definitely um, do have that that uh, lower socioeconomic need so we're very diverse um, so we have the 21 schools we have a warehouse facility and a central kitchen where we do cold production out of and i try to incorporate two pictures there so um, we do have shipping trucks so we are able to bring in a lot of our food into our central warehouse and then we ship it out to our locations um, and we do have that central kitchen facility where we really um, we only have only has one oven so we do all primarily cold production so initially going into this, um, you know, obviously we were given all the same information that you guys are today, but we were really focused on the food part. Like, I don't know, uh, you know, we felt like we were definitely a solid program. Um, we were already moving forward with trying to be really innovative and, you know, had open mind. We're wanting to do more scratch cooking, semi-scratch cooking, using fresh ingredients. Um, so we were really like, do you know, how can you help us, uh, you know, just incorporate some extra food items? and um, obviously with the minimum late, um, wage going up in, in Arizona, it's going to go to $12, um, in incremental stages, but that was a huge, huge impact as we move forward, balancing, you know, good, healthy food with the labor impact and then system efficiencies. Um, you know, before even applying, we knew that there was definitely some things that maybe we could do better. Um, it's just, you know, investing the time to really sit down and figure it out. Um, but, you know, again, we were, if anything, we were really focused on the food part of it, the chef and foundation, like we read about it, I mean, it's all about the food, but um, it's definitely not all about the food. There's so many steps before you even get to the food. And as we go through the rest of my slides, I think it'll definitely, um, you know, ring really true. 
So I just wanted to basically go through the process from what was explained, um, you know, especially by Heidi um, and then Beth on kind of, you know, the steps in your experience. Now we started and reapplied in December of 2016. Um, you know, we kind of went back and forth with, should we, should we not? Um, you know, we felt like we were pretty solid. Was there really a need? Was it, I don't want to say, was it really worth it? But, um, you know, what is, what is, you know, the expectation? Um, Hold on, sorry. I think I'm frozen. Okay. Um, so, hello? Okay, I think we're good. Okay, um, so again, we applied, um, put our application in December of 2016. Um, we were kind of at the end of the deadline, if I remember correctly, within a week and literally spent three full, like, and when I say full, like it's dark in the morning and dark when you go home um, days. So my first, uh, you know, note would be, give yourself some time because this application is definitely something that you wanna invest a lot of time in. You wanna be extremely thorough. And when when I say it's in the details, um, you cannot over inform them, especially Beth. Um, you know, she is a sponge for everything and anything you will provide. Do not, um, you know, don't think you need to skim and over anything. I mean, really provide good information. Um, you know, don't just, you know, fill your file just because you want to make it look full, but really give as much detailed information, um, you know, whether it's good or bad, um, because that's what they're there. They're there to really assess, are you, uh, you know, ready for the investment of help? Um, and two, what is your real situation? You know, there's nothing to, you know, you know, you don't have to pretend. I mean, giving the real analysis is, is absolutely where you want to, you know, want to be really honest. Um, and really, you know, promote and be confident in your district and your department. Um, one of, I think the really big pluses with us was that we do have a great relationship with our administration. And so if you have that, you know, that's, I mean, don't think that that's not important. Um, and you really want to sell that, the support, even if you don't, this is an actual great opportunity by applying for this grant to foster a really great relationship to them. So maybe, you know, they don't really, you know, come and talk or, you know, put a lot of interest in, in maybe, you know, what you're doing. This is a great thing to um, really promote that and get them involved. So again, if anything is really take time on your application, make sure it's thorough, make sure that you really um, invest, pour your heart and soul into it and sell yourself because there's a lot of good applicants that do apply. Okay, then after going through the application process, um, and then, you know, you have to do your phone interview, and then going to Boulder, which was a great two-day experience, um, you were, we had our assessment done in August. So we start in Arizona school right at the beginning of August. So we had about three weeks to get the school, the school year started, and then Beth came. Um, so it was, it was good, but of course, at the beginning of the school year, it's always, you're always in shuffle. But um, she came, and with Laureen, came and spent two weeks um, when she emphasized it is slightly disruptive. Um, it is disruptive. Um, it is. It's stressful. It is, there's a lot of questions. There's long days. Um, there's lots of interviews. Your staff is stressed because, you know, anytime anybody walks in, um, you know, it's, it's disruptive and it's um, unsettling for them. So just um, prepare yourself for that. Um, and again, interviews, there's lots of hours of interviews, especially if you're the office staff, they're really going to want to get into your processes, um, you know, look at tangible papers, you're going to pull more reports. Um, and then Beth, if anything, takes a lot of pictures and, um, you know, just prepare your staff for that. She's kind of like the paparazzi out there. Um, so some kitchens, it really throws off. They feel, you know, not uncomfortable, but they're just, you know, they feel like they're getting audited or inspectors there. So they become very self-conscious 
of you know everything and anything they're doing. So um, if anything, you can't prepare yourself enough for that. Um, just making sure your staff's aware, forewarning them. Um, you know, we never went on site with Beth. I think we crossed paths a couple of times, but you know, we just let her do her thing, and we just you know, some of the kitchens were fine, and others you know felt a little bit more uncomfortable. But you know, she's great about going in and out, and um, you know, doing her thing. Um, and then they came back or we got a report, which initially going into the whole thing, you know, we figured that the report would be, you know, maybe like five to 10 pages. I think our report was about a hundred and, um, we had a, like a couple weeks, if that, to go through it, um, and then give me feedback. So, um, you know, it was just up until that point, it was such a huge eye opening experience. Um, you know, we thought we were applying this grant for a little, you know, assistance and, you know, maybe replacing or enhancing our menu or replacing some items, enhancing our menu. Um, and at this point we had gotten, you know, a hundred page report on recommendations, assessments. Um, so it was really awesome, but also at that point too, um, kind of overwhelming. Then again, um, the group, um, Beth, Chef Ann, Heidi, Emily came out and a few others and they came gave a presentation and a debrief to our administration, which um, until you kind of go through an experience, it was great. I mean, it was, a, it was a full day powwow, really informative, but if anything, it was really impressive to our administration. Um, we had our superintendent, our associate superintendent, director of HR in there, and after the day after, they came back to us, and I mean, they were so impressed by the amount of information that was provided. Um, you know, they were really inspired. They really felt like um, they wanted to be even more supportive and they were already started out as supportive. So, um, I mean, you know, Beth did a fantastic job really putting that together and presenting, um, you know, in a really informative way. She's, you know, she's very business and, um, you know, but she's able to do such a great job as far as really um, revealing, you know, the good and the bad, so to speak, and really um, presenting to your administration. So then it brings us to our implementation period, um, and that's where we are right now. So, you know, really up until the implementation, it's all interviews, providing information. Um, the level of intensity, I'll be really honest, is there. I mean, you're constantly, you know, communicating. You have, you know, sort of deadlines, so to speak. Um, you know, it, you're in constant communication. Um, now being in the implementation period, um, you know, obviously you have your you met with them, you have your recommendations, it's on you to move forward. And if anything, that's almost, you know, that's where it's the down and dirty part where, you know, it's put on you to move forward. And so if you thought you had a lot of work then, um, you know, once you get to the implementation, it's, you know, it's all on you to really make the whole process worth it. Um, we have spent hours and hours on the planning period, um, you know, having conversations, you know, with our staff, out in our kitchens, our administration, HR, superintendent, um, you know, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a, you know, really to be progressive and to put things into place. It's a, um, depending on, I guess, what your recommendations are as well. I mean, there's a, a lot of powwowing and figuring out logistics. Um, there's a lot of research also um, based on your recommendations. It could be equipment, it could be software, it could be staffing. Um, so, you know, you're either looking up specs or you're reaching out, um, you know, trying to figure out what maybe, you know, is working with the Chef Band Foundation. So it's, it's a lot of time spent, you know, planning and then figuring out as far as, you know, what's going to work and what's not, what's realistic. Um, and then communicating. A lot of this, you know, we obviously throughout the whole process made sure that our staff, we have about 110 people um, in our department, making sure that they're aware and take them along the journey. Um, my 
first recommendation is to communicate to them, but my second would be don't over communicate because you also don't want to, um, I guess, scare. Sometimes, um, you know, it's just better to kind of see where and what the recommendations come come back at. We did have um, quite a few staff members be nervous, you know, are we gonna lose our jobs? Um, you know, what are we gonna have to do? Are we gonna have to work harder? <laughs> um, so, I mean, definitely make them aware of what you're doing, why you're doing it, um, but also don't to tell them too much because um, like in any industry or any work, um, people talk and it's a game of telephone. So um, I would just say keep them in the loop, but you know, don't reveal anything um, until it's really more concrete. And that's kind of where we're at too. We've had countless um, like meetings with our entire group. We've had a lot of um, meetings with smaller groups and some meetings with individuals. So it's a lot of time of planning and just making sure you're thoroughly and accurately uh, making everybody aware and easing, hopefully most of the time, any anxiety that they have of this process. Sorry, there we go. Um, you know, throughout this whole process, you guys are at the right at the beginning or at the starting line. So I think really before you even apply is what is your specific goals by applying for this? I mean, obviously read through it and know what you're getting into because it's not for everybody. Um, you know, really, what do you want to see? What is your long long range goals. Um, you know, I would stress that it's, it is a three year commitment. I mean, this isn't something a year has gone by so fast. Um, but it even goes beyond that. I mean, what is, whether you're going to be there in three years or not, I mean, what are you handing off? Um, you know, what is your end game? What's your goal? So I would really, you know, that if you don't, can't define that, or you're not sure you're really not committed to doing something for this, at least three years, I would advise you, you're not ready, or maybe it's it's not the right thing. So, you know, you don't want to waste your time and you don't want to waste, um, you know, the time of the, you know, the grant. Um, again, be transparent and honest. And I start, you know, I wrote in my very first or second slide is that you're asking for help and, and just remember that you don't have to be the perfect district that, you know, is, you know, serving um, fresh fruits and vegetables and, you know, you don't have dinosaur chicken nuggets. So, I mean, really, this is what your, could be your goal is you want to get away from all of that. So just being really honest at where you're at, where your menus are, where you are with staffing, where you are in your systems, because this is exactly what the grant is for. They're going to just dissect and um, kind of tear down the entire system um, to really help rebuild it or build it to be even more successful. Um, and again, what I just talked about is communicating to your employees and administration, making sure that they're all aware and um, whether they're on board or not, I mean, you want their support, but I mean, just letting them know this is what we're going to try and get into. This is, you know, our end game and really try and keep them informed right from the get go. Um, and then once you get selected and um, you get to go on this journey, you know, right from the get go, you know, it, it can be overwhelming. And, you know, as you go through it, I guess my words of wisdom would be here is just believe in the process. Um, you know, I, you know, definitely probably asked a million questions to Beth and exhausted her in that. But I mean, really believe in it and going through and just in year one, um, just how solid of a system it is and, you know, how far I think we've even been able to go in a year um, for all the information and all the time that you put in. Like you just have to have faith that they know what they're doing. Um, and, and I can really buy for it. I mean, it's, it's, you know, one of the best things, um, you know, we've ever done and I've experienced personally, um, really be willing to listen. Sometimes just, you know, you think you have the answer or you, you, um, you know, especially when Ben on her, Beth on her two week, um, assessment, you know, you tend to sometimes maybe get a little defensive because she'll question, you know, maybe your processes or she'll really try and figure out, you know, why you're doing something or, you know, just 
to get the most information out of you, um, you know, just listen and answer um, and don't try and get too far ahead of yourself. Um, be willing to challenge and be challenged. Um, again, I asked Beth when she was here a lot of questions and, you know, I think just the relationship and, and her willingness and her knowledge um, throughout the process is, is fantastic. So let her ask you questions and there's sometimes she'll walk away and, or she'll email you and you really sit there and you're like thinking and, um, and then two, always, you know, ask a lot of questions. I mean, they're all a wealth of knowledge and, you know, it, I can't vie for the, you know, the experience enough. Involve all your stakeholders. Um, again, I think I've said this three times, is just really involving your administration where you feel is appropriate. Your office staff, making sure everybody, you know, whether they're on board or not, I mean, this is a journey we're going on and your kitchen staff, you will have anxiety guaranteed. Um, doesn't matter if you have 10 people or if you have 100, um, there will be anxiety because it's the unknown. But just really taking them along on the journey with you, you can't do it alone, so you need their support. And those that don't wanna come along, you know, they'll kind of fall off a little bit or you may be able to change their, um, you know, their view as you get more into it. Um, have patience <laughs> it is again um, it's a long journey and maybe going in you're thinking I want immediate results or oh I can you know I can make changes within a year realistically it takes a lot of time and um, you know we've already started moving forward on a lot of things um, you know but you still have to have patience really like invest do it methodically and really just listen to their advisement and make you know try make some solid good advised decisions and lastly, enjoy the journey. Um, you know, you very, you know, very few of us are, you know, if you're selected, get this opportunity. And it's one of the coolest things. I really, really, you know, I can't speak enough for it. So while you're going through it on sometimes the most stressful days or you feel overwhelmed or you're exhausted, um, when especially best here for two weeks, um, really enjoy it because it's unique and it's different. Um, you know, be a leader, be a pioneer and doing some new things, um, you know, and kind of see what, how you want to define your school district. Okay, I'm done. Outstanding, Emma, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. All right, folks, I hope you got some great insight into the program, the application process, the assessment, and what it's actually been like for some districts to go through it. Um, so let's take some time to hear what your questions are. This is your chance to ask a district who's gone through it and to hear from Beth, the person who will be leading your, your operational assessment. Um, so please feel free to chime in. All right, so the first question that we have is our, um, at our district, we don't cook anything from scratch. Can I still apply? Um, I'm going to say absolutely, but I also want to pass it over to Beth to see if you have anything you want to chime in there. Can they still apply if they're not doing any scratch cooking yet? Yes, of course. I, I mean, I think that, um, you know, A, we are, you know, one of the things that we do in the workshop is we actually ask people to define scratch because I think that's always uh, an open question um, and defined differently. But I would say yes, of course, um, the whole process is here to help districts transition uh, their production. And it, and it does require a lot of, lot of complex steps. So I think one of the things that I find uh, sometimes districts start cooking from scratch before they're really ready. And then they end up uh, running into issues in uh, either in meal counts, their meal counts are dropping, they didn't communicate well enough with their district uh, parents, and parents are like, what's this? You know, my kid hates it. There's so many missteps you can make um, along the way, too. So in some, some regards, if you're really motivated to make change and you haven't done that yet, assessment is perfect. Excellent. Thank you, Beth. All right. Uh, um, Emma, so the next question is for you. Um, what is the hardest part of going through the program and what has been the best part so far? 
it's all hard. No, I'm kidding. Um, you know, it is, it, it, it just is different in, in its, being difficult. I mean, now looking back, the application was the easiest part. I, I would say it's really the implementation. It's it's planning. Um, it's getting everybody on board. Um, and I think that's going to be a long term process. Um, it's just the implementation because it's it's um, you know Beth is is very supportive specifically because she you know you do have that outreach to her um, but ultimately it's on you at that point so I mean if you choose to do nothing um, you know you've just wasted everybody's time and you know obviously it's nobody's intentions going in but um, you know it's on you to figure out you know what are the next steps how am I gonna you know figure out what, what I want to tackle first and, you know, how am I going to, you know, get this in without, you know, totally disrupting, you know, what I'm already, what I've already done and still running a program at the same time. So I would just say probably the implementation, um, you know, part. Um, the best part, I can also say everything. I mean, you know, you don't know what you're getting into until you do it and you go through it, but it's all been really great. I mean, the contacts we've been able to make, um, you know, the having just, you know, somebody else looking in at your program has just been phenomenal. You're really, most of it you already know um, is either a problem or you need to kind of fix and adjust. So I would just say really best analysis. I mean, she's really mostly spot on and everything. Um, and I guess if I want to add really based on our, you know, report that we got back and all the recommendations, you know, we're easily implementing 75% of it. So everything that, you know, she was able to, um, feedback she was able to give, we were able to move forward on. So it's really realistic and useful. Fantastic, Emma. Thank you very much. All right. The next question is, are there similar funding opportunities uh, from Chef Ann Foundation besides Project Produce that could help smaller schools and districts that don't meet the student population minimum? Um, so that's an outstanding question. Um, the nature of this program does not allow it to be efficient for districts that are smaller than about 3,000. Um, we do wish to help all districts across the country, and we do have a couple other opportunities in addition to Project Protos. Um, there's also the Solid Bars to Schools program, um, which provides free solid bars and all the equipment uh, that goes inside um, to districts, along with some technical assistance. We do have another opportunity that isn't free. Um, but it is um, online professional development for school food service staff looking to transition from heat and serve to scratch cooked. And that's via the School Food Institute. So I would encourage you to check that out as well. Um, the next question is how many districts are in this program that are provision two or at least located in Texas? Um, so we have not had any districts thus far um, apply for um, Get Schools Cooking from te or who have participated from Texas. And Beth, can I let you um, chime in around provision two? Yeah, we've, we've had uh, we've had several. We have districts that have been 100% CEP. We've had districts that are running provision two just to breakfast. We've had districts that are doing CEP in some sites. So we've had a variety of, um, of models in terms of uh, how they're running their programs. Excellent, thank you. All right, folks, well, we are right at uh, 59 minutes. Um, we're all very proud of ourselves for keeping on time. Thank you for your fantastic questions. Thank you for your participation. If you have any questions, any outstanding questions, um, please feel free to email them to me, Heidi at chefannfoundation.org or info at chefannfoundation.org and we'll get back to you as soon as we can with our best answer. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Emma, so much for your insight. Thank you, Beth, for your continued leadership of this program. Uh, and thank you to all the participants. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.